Hello, it's me. And I wanted to talk about, ah, as you may have caught on by now, the accessibility of eh, what I'm actually trying to put on YouTube. And I, considering I need to say actually a little bit less. But anyway, this video is about starting a series that will hopefully be about once a month. Whoop. <laughs> and if you can't tell, Fern's with me. Starting a series about once a month on art lesson basics, because I feel like a lot of the like art lesson or art tutorial videos on YouTube are kind of like that Instagram trend where you draw the circle, then you draw where the eyes go, and then the midline, and then you drop your phone or whatever's happening, and oh funny haha, you pick it back up and it's all done. But that got old really fast. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing a series that steps through real concepts and actually explains them. That was real, actually. And so starting here, basically beginning with at the beginning, because people who are looking up art tutorial videos probably aren't at the utmost basic. And even if you feel like you can only draw a stick figure, this video is meant to kind of help you change how you see what you're trying to draw. And so without further ado, I will get back to you somewhere else. Alrighty, I've been having some major technical difficulties, so um, you're getting this in a few different pieces. <laughs> the intro, which I did on the fly, and then the, um, the screen capture that I did record webcam on, but something was up with the sound, probably just me. I did take... <laughs> Some drawing examples that I'm just going to narrate over because um, just as a pro tip, more or less, you can buy the charging cable for, I think it's the 191 Huion pen, t tablet pen kind of thing, and it works with the 190, which I was really tying myself in a knot over. Here we go, what you came here for. So I was telling you that you can really change the way that you see things and it helps inform what goes through to your hand and how you really practice your drawing. So here we have lots of fluffy shapes um, in <laughs> beautiful Corgi. Um, so seeing the shapes before you see the, the hole can really help you so that you can break it down. And um, on this one, you can still transfer this to a traditional medium because what I did in this drawing is just a one layer because I didn't want to have it be like a Krita tutorial or a Photoshop tutorial. I just want it to be an art tutorial. So even if you just have a sheet of computer paper and a pencil, this will still work, you can still practice. And if you look at the shapes of this one, there's obviously the nose and everything, and then there's the cheeks and then a bunch of foreshortened kind of things. Um, and if you kind of approach it how a lot of people do, how they think what they're seeing translates to what they're drawing, they would come up with something like this probably. And that's where people get really frustrated because they know what a corgi looks like, they know how the nose comes out, so they bypass what they're really seeing, and they come out with something that really frustrates them. And frustration is one of the main reasons, at least in my experience, uh, what I've seen in other people why they stop drawing, say, oh, I can't draw because the connection in their brain says, oh, you know what that already looks like, so let's go for the instant gratification and just draw what you think versus what you're just seeing. And what I wanted to show here is how you can break things down into literally just what you're seeing so you can get past your brain trying to be... trying to... <laughs> trying to get to the head of the class, but everybody has to practice. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So what we have here is you have the little bean shape, the cheeks, and then you have the dome up here. Okay, there we go. So you have the cheeks that go up, start with the shapes that you recognize. Then you have what you see of the head, and his ears are kind of back a little bit. So just literally just drawing the lines that you see. And, oh, and this is going to be a pretty quick sketch, definitely not polished, but more illustrative than 
something I would probably save. So, again, most people, they know what a tongue is shaped like, so they'll probably just put it straight out. But if you draw just literally the lines that you see, then you get closer to something that gives you more of a spark of satisfaction and can you can encourage yourself to keep going and keep practicing. So, and then so for the body in the front, just going with the shape that you see of the neck ruff instead of saying to yourself, oh, I know what that's shaped like, and then it comes out completely different from the photo that you're trying to reference. Or the dog, actually, in front of you, if you're very, very, very lucky. And so I think this is where I went into the front shirt. No, that's the when I did the, the butt thing there. So, you, again, you know how the dog comes out in the back, so you may be tempted to just go with, like, okay, that's the butt end. Um, but... So that is where the line relativity can come in. So since you did put down the neck ruffle, neck floof right there, you can tell yourself, okay, the shirt line for the top right shoulder comes out about halfway up the neck ruffle. And so you can build on that and everything is relative to itself. So you can tell yourself, okay, the start of the shirt comes up about halfway up the neck ruffle and kind of block those in, waiting for it, waiting for it. There we go, okay. So now that you have the outer lines, you can go with the basic shape because you don't have to worry about where it connects to everything. And eventually, I think I'll do a video about fabric folds. I still have to use a lot of references for those, but there's no shame in that. And also maybe a video on the foreshortening, because again, you know what the dog paw is shaped like, but um, going with just literally the shapes that you see, and a little bit of that foot is going to be seen in a principle in the next example that I'll give you because there's no like hard and fast lines on there, but knowing where to imply the lines can help you kind of get away from the anxiety of, oh no, I have to do like super realism, have to do crazy shading, because this is just about lines right now. It's not about blending. It's not about color choices, things like that. And so you can do but the same way. And I did that a little big, but the spirit is there. And then tail comes out. So that looks like it was referenced from that photo. It can definitely be cleaned up and tweaked and spacing and stuff better, um, but it looks like that pose. And so when do we go to the next one? Okay, so something with less defined lines, because being able to pick out where the lines should be is also really good skill to have, because obviously there's still some pronounced shapes here. You have the armpit, you have the top of the shoulder, the muscle, the elbow, and a bunch of little shapes in the hands. But sort of being able to force the lines in and then going from there to get the style that you want is really, really valuable to work on. and. All of this came through lots and lots of practice, because I did have a couple years of formal practice, um, and before then, <laughs> that was dog, before then, I was really obsessed with getting the shading right, getting the lighting, and like smudging everything with q-tips and blah 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 blah, but um, through a period in my life, um, the easiest the most accessible tool was just a ballpoint pen and whatever paper that I had. So I grew, I gained a love for just manipulating how the lines look because you can't always have a perfect gradient all over the curve of something. And um, if you can, <laughs> you can take lines and transfer that to practicing your shading, but having a good sketch can be something good to build on if you want to go the route of like digital painting or oil painting different kind of smoother styles but me i like cross hatchy stuff like edward gorey and um uh, sydney paget kind of stuff so i wanted to give you an example of here and i'm going to draw over it again kind of forcing the lines in there 
where different shapes are gonna be, like we did with the dog. And so you have the armpit, you have the top of the shoulder, you have the main muscle, and then you have the... Someone's laughing because I don't know the main, the actual terms for these, but the top of the muscle when you hold your arm like that. And then the bottom muscle there that doesn't go all the way to the elbow because the elbow is... There is uh, a main bone that goes out and then the arm bone actually kind of sticks out. It doesn't connect quite like the knee. And then you go up, and the hand is lots of little pieces that, like I was talking about with the dog's shirt, the hand is difficult for a lot of people because everything has to be in a certain relativity to each other. So what I did here is the side of the hand, and then um, thinking of where the line of the gap comes out. So just undoing that, and then copying it on the other side. Because tracing can be useful, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, but you should be able to take what you learn with tracing and, for lack of a better term, the, the muscle memory there, kind of how you know things should be in relativity to each other, and then transfer it to your own style, your own paper, etc. And so, instead of coming out just straight, copying the gentle curve there, And like I said, the elbow isn't just one long curve, there's a little point that sticks out from the lower arm muscle there. And so, th again with the lines, kind of forcing the lines, even though there's not hard and fast high contrast lines, the crook of the elbow, you can kind of see that it doesn't just meet up together perfectly. There's another little swoop that goes in there before the forearm comes out. And learning how to kind of sense those lines and figuring out which ones should be forced and which ones should be kind of downplayed. Much like the hand, because the hand doesn't have a lot of hard and fast high contrast lines, but it's knowing how much to force it, where it still looks like a hand and still looks like it can realistically move. Unless you're drawing, like, Simpsons or something, I don't know. Okay, so instead of getting ahead of ourselves, just drawing the shapes that we see. And the little wrist wrinkle there. And then the little finger comes out like that. And then going with the relativity of everything else. The gap in the hand comes out maybe halfway down the line, the underline of the little finger. So you can make that shape instead of telling yourself, oh, I know what a hand looks like, and then just having it look like mutant octopus or something there. And one thing that I've noticed over the years drawing hands is that they tend to look really odd in the middle of drawing them, but the more you practice, the more you can get a sense of what's an acceptable odd versus knowing when things are about to go askew. <laughs> And also a lot of hand drawing is knowing where to put the shading because there's only so far you can press the lines. So having a good balance between those is ideal. And I just realized that the shading I've done on here with the hatching is not super good, but we can address that in a different video. <laughs> but that also looks like it was referenced from that photo on the left. There's still things about it, like super pronounced muscles, I guess, and the shading is a little off, but it's a good sketch to jump off of if you're trying to go for realism, or if you're trying to have a high sketchbook um, to get a different style out of it. And <laughs> thirdly, we're gonna go with this guy, because I was having a weird day and I wanted to look at his face. 
no questions will be answered. And I'm going to speed this up because uh, this video is getting kind of long and I wanted it to be just a relatively quick run through. I know it's longer than a lot of my other videos, but I wanted to talk to you, not just throw a tutorial in your face and say, okay, have fun. Um, because I actually want this to be usable to someone, not just a show off of, hey, look what I can do. <laughs> so combining what we've learned about picking out the shapes with, um, I can English. Combined with what we've learned about picking out the shapes with choosing where to force the lines, because he does have very pronounced features, but you can't draw every single line there. You just want enough for your image to be recognizable as, oh yeah, I know who that is. And also another video that I will do in the future is... Uh, one class that I really liked a few years ago was comic and caricature, and something really cool that we did in there was figuring out how much you have to make a drawing look like a person. Um, what What is the minimal effort you can do to make sure your drawing is recognizable as the person that you're actually drawing? Um, such as in caricatures, a lot of characters the characters look similar, but they look exactly like who they're supposed to be. And portraits can be a lot like that, because if you can't tell, I don't do a ton of super realism. I don't like hyper realism because I just take a photo and nothing to knock people do that. But that's not my thing. I like some texture, some style and everything. So basically what I picked out here was do my best to get the face shape correct and the relativity of everything in there because if you draw David Tennant with the wrong hair, it doesn't look like David Tennant. <laughs> it looks like some person who might kind of look like David Tennant, but it, you're not going to register it as him unless it's a character that you know, but that's uh, my current rant for a different time. So this is what I mean by practice really, really matters, because you can go from seeing the shapes in your dog or a dog and practicing with the relativity of that, and then go to things that are less pronounced, like like anatomy and arms and things, or even like nature, picking where the lines should be, going with exactly what you see versus what you think you see, and as long as you practice that, get more of a sense of connecting your brain to what your hand is doing, then that's when you can get more confidence and take off. <laughs> take off in your own progress, because one of the best compliments that I ever had in my formal training in art was that I knew how to self-correct. And that wasn't that I did everything perfect all the time, but it was more in the sense of I could tell when something was off, and then I could figure out how to fix it. So getting to that point is really, really helpful in your own art, even if it's stylized, even if it's super like hyper-realistic or whatever other style that you like, because classes can help, yes, but getting past that first, however large, hurdle of telling yourself, oh, I can't draw, like, oh, that, that sucks, that doesn't actually look like what I was trying to draw, and blah, 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 blah. Practicing, even if it's private, even if you show nobody, can help you get to the point where you can get so much better at self-correcting, which is an exciting place to be, because even if you're not doing things perfectly, you can look at it and go, I did my best, I know what I would do better next time. And so I hope this helped somebody out. Um, it was kind of a mishmash of different technological issues, but that's really the point. I am trying to directly help people out and encourage people to practice, 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 and practice makes progress. It will never make perfect because even I'm looking at these things going, uh, why did I do that? I could have done that so much better, but that's also me being self-conscious on a video. Anyway, I mentioned a few other uh, art lesson videos that I wanted to do in the future. I have more than that planned. If you have anything specific that you'd like to see or you'd like to show me some of your art, um, I would love to see that even if you don't think it's something um, that you're really super confident in. Um, I can tell when people really care about what they're doing. So um, if you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. That lets me know what people are actually watching. <laughs>
Um, and if you'd like to see my own portfolio, that is at blackbirdparlor.com, um, which is also incidentally where my shop is if you'd like to support me. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.